huge trade in the NHL as the team that was already the favorites to win the Stanley Cup has now gotten themselves a little bit stronger going out and acquiring Dmitry Orlov and Garnet Hathaway in a three-team trade involving the Washington Capitals as well as the Minnesota Wilds surprisingly adding salary in this trade. Why would the Wild do that? What position are the Bruins in to win the Cup? Breaking it all down right now. Welcome back to Edgework here on the Hammer Betting Network. We're typically live Monday through Friday, 10.30 a.m. Eastern Time, giving daily picks and previews of the games that night. But as we've been doing recently, breaking down trades, and there was a big trade here tonight. The Boston Bruins have now acquired Dmitry Orlov and Garnet Hathaway from the Washington Capitals in exchange for a 2023 first-round pick, 24 third-round pick, a 2025 second round pick as well as Craig Smith and now we are seeing the Minnesota Wilds yet again taking on more salary from another team in a trade taking on 25% of Orlov's salary uh, fifth round pick from the Bruins as well as Andre Svetlakov a 26 year old playing in the KHL right now Washington also does retain 50% in this salary from Orlov Alex we'll start right away with uh, thoughts on the trade overall just in terms of maybe uh, how much you kind of saw given up here, do you think that it was appropriate? We see the amount of salary retained. You think this was kind of even for what, what was given up and what was received? Uh, maybe there was a bit of an overpayment. What are your thoughts on that right away? No, I think this is a, a, a fair trade. I mean, the, the gem of this deal, and pun intended, is definitely Garnet Hathaway going to the Boston <laughs> Bruins. I, he's a guy that I've really liked watching over the years. Uh, you know, played a few years in Calgary, a few years in Washington. And he's not going to be some just uh, shutdown scorer. He's not going to be the, you know, best defensive forward. You know, he's not even going to be the toughest guy on the ice, uh, you know, all the time. But he will stand up for his teammates, drop the mitts. He will block shots. Uh, and he will give you some timely goals. I mean, he won't give you many of them, but when they come through, they're pretty big. You know, he's at nine goals right now in the season. Last year was his career high 14. And of those 14 goals, he had four of them uh, be game winners. His last year in Calgary, he had 11 goals. Five of those were game winners. So when you're talking about the playoffs, you need those clutch performers, those guys in second and third overtime that step up. Maybe it's not a Pasternak or, or a Marchand or a Bergeron. Maybe it's a guy like Garnett Hathaway that gets it done for the Bruins. So I think that's a, a huge plus for them. On the flip side, I mean, Washington's a team that I think they're kind of uh, finding themselves more on the outside looking in at this point. They take Craig Smith, the guy who was a $3.1 million cap hit for the Bruins, wasn't getting much ice time. I think the last game he played with the Bees, he only had about six minutes ice time against uh, Ottawa just a few nights ago. So they're not really losing much there. You know, the, uh, Washington has just kind of taken on uh, uh, you know some money. And, of course, getting that first round pick in 2023, a couple of higher picks in 24 and 25. And then you've got the Minnesota Wild who just, you know, they're just jumping in left and right say, hey, you guys need some help here over here? They're just uh, helping teams out with uh, eating up some of the salary, which says a lot because, like I said, they, they did, what, 50% uh, in the, the O'Reilly deal from St. Louis, now 25% here uh, in exchange for a draft pick uh, to help out Boston. This definitely seems like the Wild are either loading up to do something really big or they're just kind of just sitting pat and saying, hey, you know what? We had a rough start. I don't think we're going to be able to get back toward the, the the top of this race. And maybe they're bowing out of it. But even with a big trade imminent, it could mean that they're going to be moving pieces and selling and helping out another team or, you know, trying to be another, maybe they have a three-way partner and somebody else, but it involves players, not just, uh, you know, retaining salary and moving draft picks. So it's still something to keep an eye on with Minnesota, what they're doing. But this is obviously a huge deal for Boston. And Dmitry Orlov, uh, a veteran defenseman, a guy who, like I said, you know, he's not going to just show up every night on the score sheet, but what he does uh, in that in that clubhouse and, and on the ice, it'll have a bigger impact than having another veteran presence uh, with this Bruins team that's super dynamic and pretty young uh, with some of those core guys. Obviously, of course, the, the main uh, stalwarts are, are the veterans, but those younger guys can always help from another older voice in the room. Yeah, and that Minnesota team you're talking about, both deals acquire, uh, they have been involved in at this point. They took 50% of the 50% uh, of the remaining of uh, O'Reilly, so they take 25% of his total contract. Looks like they've done the same here again with Orlov. It's kind of interesting to see that happen. It's not necessarily a team that I would imagine would be involved in this type of stuff. You're more looking at maybe the Arizona, Anaheims, maybe even a Columbus at this point to do that and just finish out the season and, and let it ride to, to 
to close things out, but not so much Minnesota. Uh, I am kind of curious your thoughts on Boston's makeup as they are right now with these two guys coming to their team. You touched on Garnet Hathaway. I think that's a big underrated piece for them. I kind of relate that a little bit to the Nola Chari acquisition in Toronto. Maybe it goes under the mm-hmm. radar, but long-term playoffs, that's the kind of guy you see Boston, Tampa, Colorado add as they approach the deadline or get to the deadline. It's that depth piece who plays a certain style of hockey, has playoff success. They are a playoff performer, but the big piece in all of this is obviously Dmitry Orlov and how he's going to impact that Bruins defense how much better do you see Boston being now acquiring these two guys especially Dmitry Orlov and the boost that he's going to give to the back end for the Bruins going forward yeah I mean that well that depth is immense of it especially when you're talking about you know uh guys who've had some injury issues within that that Boston blue line and not even that even if you got Mm -hmm. everybody healthy the fact that you're on this kind of crazy pace to basically you know set the NHL record for points and, and wins at some point, you're going to wrap up the division pretty soon. You're going to wrap up uh, the President's Trophy sooner than, than later. So you're not going to start playing all your top guys. Those last eight to ten games probably won't mean anything for the Bruins. So you want to have your depth. You want to have guys that you can rotate in and out. So even, you know, uh, like I said, I think there's a two two pieces that obviously I think the impact will be felt more once they get into the postseason. But just having that extra uh, depth now just gives you a, a better rotation. Hathaway is a guy you can slot at really any of the four forward positions. So, <clears throat> excuse me. So, with having that, you know, if if you're you know given uh, Pasternak, you know, the rest of the of the season off after Game seventy six or something, uh, you know, or, or resting, you know, some of those older guys, uh, you know, you have a player that you can slide in uh, into any slot and makes things expansive. So those things are, are critical too, not just whether they produce an ice, but just having fresher bodies uh, in what's been a very successful season and a season where you're going to be looking to, you know, kind of rest some guys and make sure everyone's fresh and healthy for the postseason once you've taken care of all of your seasonal duties, wrapping up the division and the president's role. So now the Bruins are sitting here at plus 500 to win the cup. It's effectively not, or essentially not changed uh, since this trade has gone down. Now we are obviously doing this very quickly after the trade has been announced. So give it some time and it might move. But uh, even uh, saying that, are you a little bit surprised that it stayed it stayed exactly where it's at? They were the front runners, they were the leading team, the favorites to win the Stanley Cup this season. Plus 500, I you'd expect it's not going to be a major swing of odds or a major shift, uh, but that you see it kind of stay stagnant. Maybe it continue maybe it moves over the next couple of days. What do you kind of make about the odds for the Bruins to win the Stanley Cup at this point? The fact that they haven't changed and maybe do you think that they will move? Yeah, well, two reasons why they haven't moved. One, like you said, this is kind of a bit of an under-the-radar move, especially for just the general betting public and even bookmakers, to be honest. I mean, how many bookmakers do you think you could ask and they tell you who Garnet Hathaway is? Probably not that many. <laughs> they have to think about it for a minute. So with, with that being said, and also, too, second point is that there's probably going to be more moves coming for Boston. I could see one or two more things happening before March 3rd. I think books don't want to overreact to this right now because they know they may have to make another adjustment, a bigger adjustment, depending on what happens between now and March 3rd. Yeah, I think that that's fair. I, I was going to ask you the next question is, do you think the Bruins have more moves up their sleeve? And I think you kind of just answered that there. Uh, <laughs> now, I guess specifically on this, though, uh, do you think that maybe the next move that the Bruins were to make, obviously, this is pure speculation. This isn't uh, based on insider or anything. But like you're looking at the Bruins team, how they're now built, adding Orlov and Hathaway into this lineup. We had heard rumors, hey, they're in ch- on Chikrin. They're in on Timo Meyer. I think at this point, it might rule out Chikrin. Uh, to a degree you never really know they could surprise us but you think the Boston Bruins are still going to go big game hunting or is this going to be smaller pieces that they're going to look to add ahead of the deadline yeah I, I think it'll be smaller pieces at this point I don't see them uh you know that we've heard the talks kind of dwindled down about Patrick Kane going to ball to, to the Boston I don't think that's going to be yeah. uh fitting at this point like you said Chikrin makes little to no sense at this point right now either so uh it would be more depth players they're just trying to upgrade some guys that they have just taking a, a quick glance at their uh the, the lineup right now they've only got what one two three four guys who are ufa or rfas in the forward group 
uh, that they would be looking to move. And, of course, one of those guys being David Postenock, we certainly aren't going to see him getting moved right now. <laughs> uh, so, uh, so you can rule him out and, and Bergeron as well, another guy you can rule out. But, but the, you know, looking at some of those bottom line guys like a, a Trent Frederick, for example, I mean, you know, he's C sturdy, but if you can find a way to upgrade him, uh, then that may be the other move. Other than that, you know, more than likely the chances are Boston stays packed. Maybe make some depth moves. Maybe try to upgrade somebody at that AHL level, which, like I said, that doesn't mean anything for the playoffs, but to upgrade and get somebody that you can rotate in at the later part of the season when you're wrapping up. Give them some NHL time along with some younger guys. I'm sure they want to give some NHL time when they're resting some of those veterans. All right, last thing that I'm going to ask you here before we wrap this one up, and it's not related to the Bruins. It's not related to the Capitals. It is focused on the Minnesota Wild. There's a lot going on here. Uh, I'm going to give credit to you for most of this, bringing some of this to my attention here. Uh, This one specifically, Minnesota right now sitting at plus 300 to miss the playoffs. They're holding on to the second wild card spot in in the uh, West. They're not. It's not like they're way out of it in the Central Division. We're also seeing some of the teams ahead of them sliding around a little bit. We've talked on the shows throughout the weeks, uh, past couple of weeks, about how volatile the Western Conference playoff picture looks. And yet now all of a sudden Minnesota is going out and just acquiring salary ahead of this deadline to help other teams out. I mean. A, what is going on with the Minnesota Wilds? What are they doing? Why are they acquiring these salaries? And B, is plus 300 to miss the playoffs for the Minnesota Wild something that would intrigue you at this point in time? Yeah, like I said, it, it, it seems like there's something that Bill Garrett's got cooking that's a lot larger than anything we've seen so far this deadline. And, and these little moves with him acquiring salary, I don't know if it means that he's selling off pieces because there's a couple of guys that he has in his lineup, Jordan Greenway and Matt Dumba, uh, who are big yeah. cap hits that they're going to have to move away from. And it's better sooner than later because they have uh, cap hell that they're running into the next two years, of course, with the Suter and Parise uh, hits. Uh, coming up at, at, a, at a full clip now. So I don't know what exactly that is they're planning. And then on top of it, you look at, you know, they had a somewhat fairly successful homestand, uh, the longest homestand of the season just now. They're, they're playing, you know, in just uh, you know a few minutes about to start as we're taping this, uh, getting ready to play the Columbus Blue Jackets. But they've been an up and down team. They just haven't been consistent enough. And, you know, I think the writing's on the wall in a sense where, you know, you see what's going on in the Pacific Division how much of a log jam that is. You know, you have Dallas that's kind of sliding out of favor right now. Lost into the last 10, but you got Colorado still fighting. You've got Nashville with uh, half a puncher chance. You've got Winnipeg still in the mix. So Mm -hmm. the while they're trying to figure out their identity of are we in or are we out? And it seems like they are kind of leaning more toward the outside right now. And with that being said, plus 300, that number is not going to be around long. So I'd grab even a small piece of that right now, just because, uh, even if they do try to upgrade, that doesn't mean it's going to work. They've still been struggling all year with the pieces they've had. It doesn't mean a, a, a trade's not going to just turn everything around. All of a sudden, they're, they're a playoff team or a cup contender. So yeah. I, I'd take a small shot with plus 300 for the Wilds to miss the playoffs at this point now, which is interesting because I, they were my, actually one of my favorites to make it to the cup finals out of the West uh, at the beginning of the season. But that rough start, they just haven't been able to, to, to get afloat and get to the rhythm that they were at at any point in last season and uh, certainly what was expected of this year. Yeah, and this is a little interesting to me too watching this because uh, I was higher on them coming into the year, than especially than where they're at right now. And even in the position that they're in, just kind of gripping onto that second wild card. And as you mentioned, Parise and Suter contracts coming up that are going to absolutely crush them for the next couple of years. I, I was in the position thinking at this deadline, Minnesota is going to be in a spot to say, all right, forget it. Like put, put some of our chips in at least and try to make a push. You've went out and had the flurry deal, like bring him in full time kind of thing. And it's, uh, it's interesting to see what's going on. Maybe we're going to get an Alan Walsh tweet with a uh, sword through Mark andre <laughs> Fleury's back coming up next here. Round Maybe. two signed by uh, Bill Guerin this time on the sword. <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah. Alex, thank you for doing this. Appreciate it, as always. For anyone who watched here today, make sure to like this video. If you enjoyed the content, you're not subscribed yet, please hit that subscribe button. You'll get notified every time we go live, Monday through Friday, 10.30 a.m. Eastern time, doing daily picks and previews of the games that night as well as our new podcast with david pagnotta dennis bernstein and zach bodenstein and on top of that more videos like this breaking down trades injury information all that kind of stuff approaching the deadline and as we get to playoffs 
how things could be affected, what the futures markets may look like. So please make sure to hit that subscribe button, like this video. Thank you guys for watching. Let us know your comments below, your thoughts on the trade. If you think there's a winner, a loser, if you'd bet the Minnesota Wild to miss the playoffs at plus 300, we will see you guys for our live streams Monday through Friday, 10.30 a.m. Eastern time. We'll see you then.